Hey, this is Mike. I'm here at Grand Strand Nissan in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and I'm checking out a 2015 Nissan Sentra. And this is the SL trim level, so it has quite a bit of features. And um, let's check it out. This one's white, as you can see. And here in the front, we have, I think, our halogen headlights and fog lights here in the front. It does have an LED uh, accent here, just below uh, the headlight. And then you got your, your orange marker there. Has 17 inch aluminum wheels. Has a four wheel disc brakes. It looks like a painted um, silver aluminum. So this vehicle has the intelligent key, which I'm going to show it to you, um, and I'm going to put it in my pocket because this key is designed to be able to have it in your pocket and uh, not have to take it out. So you can use it to open up the trunk. You can use it to lock and unlock the doors. I'm going to make sure the vehicle is locked. So now the vehicle is secure. And uh, so now the key is going in my pocket for the rest of the video. So walking up to the car, um, it does have a, the ability to sense the key. And when I push this button, it will unlock this door. I can push it again and lock all, unlock all doors. So now the key, door is unlocked. I'll show you the inside. This one has black interior. And with some wood grain accents there. Soft to the touch. Um, plastic there at the bottom, like an ABS, I guess. There's a manual adjustment on the pa on the passenger side seat, and it does have the, uh, the center there on the threshold. These seats are heated here in the front. There's the controls for them. They do have some perforations here, and they. Um, they are the zero gravity seat, so they're very comfortable. There's the glove compartment. Massive amounts of room, just like most of the Nissans in 2015. This one has the sunroof, which I'll show you from the inside. Now let's check out the back seat. Back seat has a pretty good amount of room back here. Um, the leg room is sufficient. It's not like uh, super cramped or anything, but this is a small car, so uh, you do have some pockets there. So it's not like a you know super roomy car it's because it is small and uh, it's not an SUV or anything. So it's 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 good. Um, so basically, sitting in the back seat, it's not it's not like it's going to be the most comfortable. It's not like an Armada or anything like that. So looking here in the back, this does have the LED accented tail lights here. You can see the LEDs around there, and then you've got the markers there. Um, I'm assuming um, I hadn't seen this one at night. I would like to do a video of this at nighttime so you can see what it looks like. Let's see what it looks like that this way. So right here, this is the backup camera right here. And uh, just under here is a little button, and you can push that button only when you have the key in your, you know, nearby within a few feet. You can push that button, and it will open up the trunk. Plenty of room back here. Massive amounts of room in the trunk. Those seats do fold down in case you need some more, you know, going to Lowe's or something, and you need to um, basically put some more stuff, a bigger box or whatever here. It does have a spare tire and a jack, which. Some new cars are not coming with spare tires, so you want to definitely check your vehicles, uh, depending on the brand, if they have a spare tire or not. Now this one, well, let me show you. Let me open it up again. There's one thing I want to show you. This one has the premium Bose sound system. And looking under here, you can see the amplifier, which looks pretty cool. And there's the speakers there. But, uh, but yeah, I just forgot to show you the amplifier. Alright. 
Moving on around here. And here's the window sticker. Check out that gas mileage. I'm going to put this stuff, um, I'm going to put a link to this, this in the description to the website so you can check out all the details um, and also some details in the description as well. Um, but you know, if you want to use the pause button and check that out, you could. Here's the inside of the driver's door. You see black, all black interior uh, except for the, the wood grain there. Which would, I think this would be nice if it was in like an ebony wood. That brown, the brown still looks good. Water brought a holder there, power windows. Now all the windows you have to manually hold um, to roll up and down except for the driver's side. You can actually lock out all the other uh, windows except for the driver's side by pushing this button here. You can lock and unlock the doors using these buttons. Um, this still has some protective uh, plastic on it because it is a new vehicle and I want the, uh, the new owner to be um, happy with the condition of it. They want a new, new vehicle. So I'm going to go ahead and hop in. Alright, so now I'm inside. Vehicle's off. It's pretty quiet. So to start it, you just put your foot on the brake and push the start button. It starts up the 1.8 inch. Uh, <laughs> 1.8 liter. 1.8 liter engine. And, uh, it does have the CVT transmission, of course, and um, so you get the really good gas mileage and you get a decent pickup. You'd be surprised how um, how quick a 1.8 liter four-cylinder engine can be when it's paired to a CVT transmission in a Nissan. Not all, of, not all of them are the same, don't get me wrong. Some of the CVT transmissions I can care less for. Nissan CVTs are a, a totally different story. So, um, so here on the left of the steering wheel, we've got the ability to open up the trunk. You can adjust your side mirrors here, and uh, you can. This is your dimmer switch, so you can make your interior lights um, on your dash around your gauges uh, brighter or dimmer. It does have an eco mode? Uh, you can turn the eco mode on and off. Basically, this will give you the pr the most. The emphasis, it tells the computer that you want to emphasize gas mileage and not performance. When you turn it off, it switches a little bit more towards, um, you know, just normal driving. Sport mode is the opposite of the Eco. Basically, it's telling the computer that you want the most power and you don't give a crap about uh, gas mileage in the moment. You just want to, you know, have the most power that the vehicle can give, can give you. Uh, this is the traction control button. You can turn that off if you want. Uh, it's really for um, keeping you straight on the road, but if you want to turn that off in case you get stuck in the snow or something like that, and um, basically you need to spin wheels or something, something to that effect. It does have a tilt steering wheel, and it does telescope as well. Alright, so here's the steering wheel. It is a leather wrapped steering wheel, black, with uh, stitching here on the inside. Has a good good grip to it, a little bit of give. It's not really, uh, you know, it gives a little bit to your hands and kind of, um, that way you don't get too fatigued holding the steering wheel for hours if you're on long trips. And this is your cruise control on the right side. Um, you can turn it off, on and off. You can set it. You can go up and down uh, faster or slower, that kind of thing. On this side, um, you have your volume control here on the on the here. The source is it like AM, FM, satellite radio, um, you know, USB port, CD. This one has a CD. You can you know hit the source and cycle through that. Um, once you pair your cell phone to the system, you can uh, make and receive calls by pushing the uh, the phone button there. Also, this button here is your voice recognition, to where you can um, it's kind of you know similar to the the phone system, except for you're talking to the vehicle and you're telling the vehicle to tune to a certain radio station or um, or call a specific person that happens to be in your cell phone phone book, that kind of stuff. These buttons up here, you have a menu button, and then you have an up and down, 
and uh, so here's your gauges and those buttons I just showed you correspond to the center screen right now um, it's showing me the uh, miles per gallon of course this vehicle has nine miles on it so there's not much not much of an average there most of its a lot of idling or moving around in the, on the, the dealership lot so that's why it's very low um, so I push that menu button I showed you you can get the real time you know in the moment you can get the average and you can reset it of course uh, you can make that go away um, miles per hour this is how many miles you got um, uh, until empty so it's showing you like a little pointing to the gas gas pump there and it says you can go 412 miles before you have to go to the gas pump and uh, there's your trip a trip b and then your you know this is your um you know showing you to it's it's designed while you're driving to tell you where your optimal gas mileage is and then there of course your um you have your speedometer this goes up to 160 I don't know if this car will do it. Maybe it will. I don't know. Let me know if you ever know anything about that. Uh, 1.8 liter, uh, four cylinder, speedometer goes up to 160. Maybe. I don't. It seems unlikely. I'd have to kind of see it. But anyway, uh, the gas gauge there. Just want to mention. I'll probably make a separate video for this. Uh, on the gas gauge, you see that little arrow there? It's showing a little arrow, and it's pointing to my right. Uh, that's telling you what side the gas cap is on so where when you're putting gas in it you know which side to pull up to if you're um, this is you just get in this vehicle and it's the first time you ever put gas in it uh, it tells you um, you know which side the gas is now this is on a lot of the different vehicles not just Nissan's that arrow so that's kind of what I want to make a video separate just to kind of show you um, you know because a lot of times I, I, I it's funny I didn't even know that little arrow uh, was there and I never paid attention to it and so I mean here I am 40 years old and never knew uh, there's cars that's it's been like that on a lot of cars for a long time so anyways <laughs> uh, so maybe some other people don't know about it as well it does have an automatic headlight system where you know turn on and off depend on the, uh, the the light outside and then you have the um, you know your windshield washer windshield washers and wipers and stuff on that side all right, so over here, we've got the vents here, and and this is your center screen. It's a small, fairly small. Um, I don't remember the exact. Looks like a, I don't know, five inch or something like that. Touch screen, and so right now, I'm in the uh, the satellite radio screen, and you know, of course, I can touch the screen. I can change through stations like that, and uh, you know, of course, it has AM, FM. And you can also put a CD right here, play CDs. It has the auxiliary input, which we will get to in a minute. But it has that. Uh, navigation. Now I'm going to push the navigation button. That takes me to where I put the street address. And, um, and also I can save my home address and stuff like that. I can push this map button. And this takes me to the actual map. So I'm just kind of seeing where I'm at in relationship to other roads and stuff. So pushing this camera button, uh, this does have a backup camera. So basically, I'm going to go ahead and put it in reverse, so you can see the backup camera. And you see those lines; um, those tell me, you know, the approximate distance I am away from something. And basically, if you don't want those lines there, you can push that button and turn them off, on or off. So that's what that's for. I'm going to put it back in park. Now uh, it has a an app system to where you can. Um, you know, like Sirius XM, uh, Travel Link is a really cool feature there, and you can check out the fuel prices uh, uh, nearby, and you can you know sort of by price or distance that kind of stuff. So um, so there's lots of cool apps that you can use uh, that I highly recommend using, especially if you're in an area that you're not familiar with. Um, you know, of course, this is your uh, like your day and night settings there for your screen. This is your phone button, just like the one on the steering wheel. Change to the stations, hit the back button to go back at a certain screens. Um, you can turn through the stations there. You can, there's your volume there. Now down here is your climate control. And uh, it does have the auto feature. You can, it's a dual zone, left, you know, passenger and driver. You can, in, you know, do it individually. Or you could turn dual off and it'll sync both of them so they're the same. 
front defrost, rear defrost. Um, you can recirculate the air in case there's outside odors or whatever, or you just want fresh, or you want fresh air, you can push that. Uh, your fan speed is here, and mode basically just changes where you want the air to blow. It just cycles through there. And then you've got like a, what looks like an old-fashioned ashtray here. Um, actually has this thing here to uh, say no smoking that goes in there, but I guess you could get one um, from Nissan that says, you know, like an actual smoking uh, smokers group, I think it's called. And there's, it looks like you can actually put a cigarette lighter in there. So it is kind of like an old-timey, <laughs> it's kind of old-timey, um, like ashtray. You don't really see those a lot in vehicles, but this one has that ability, you know, to have an ashtray in it. So that covers that up and then there's your shifter and like I showed you, you put it in reverse backup camera comes up and, uh, and then you have drive and then it has a low so if you need to really um, you know get that CVT transmission to uh, to a lower gear like say if you're going downhill or something and you want to make sure that you're um, you know you're not going too fast you're using a little bit of engine braking uh, that's what that feature is for and there's your parking brake there also known as an emergency brake there's a place it looks like to put for place for quarters here there's your heated seat controls for driver and passenger cup holders all right here now let me get my cell phone out which I have a a note for and uh, so there's my cell phone and I'm gonna go ahead and just see where it goes actually it fits in that big cup holder pretty nice so I guess that's where I would have to put the uh, my phone in this particular vehicle is that cup holder don't see any other convenient places to put it um, other than, than there uh, it does take up my cup holder um, I guess I can I can lay it like that and it takes up both but it's more uh, it's not sticking up so much So, yeah, I'm kind of surprised that some uh, cars just don't really have a, a good place to put a cell phone since everybody carries them around now. Um, it's kind of a uh, kind of a big deal to me anyways. All right, so the center console slides forward and back and uh, and also lifts up. And then this is where you would find, let me get this strap out of the way. Let's go ahead and put it around the camera. Maybe that will get it out of the way. Okay, so in here you'll find the USB and auxiliary inputs, as well as a little storage pocket and a power supply. So it's not like a huge one, huge uh, storage area or anything, but it does give you, you know, some space to put, you know, something small. Glove compartment's pretty good size, so you, you know, you got some storage options there, cause, as well as a trunk. Now this does have the home link um, buttons up here. That's what these little, little homes look like. Uh, that's for your garage door opener. This does have an auto dim uh, rear view mirror and you can turn that on or off here. Place, place to put your sunglasses is up here. Got some little LED lights there. And uh, this one does have the sunroof. You can move the shade back like so. And uh, you can use this button here and open it up. Close it. You can also vent it. Or if you just want to close the shade and that way um, the sun's not shining in, you can do that. Let's see what it looks like back there. I'm trying my best to remember to show you the, the large view because sometimes I get really close to stuff and uh, you kind of get lost in all the little details so I um, really apologize for that and I uh, want to try to satisfy your desires and needs so um, and of course that's it makes perfect sense so there's the somewhat of a broad view there all right let's check the, under the hood check out that 1.8 inch 1.8 liter Four cylinder engine.
pretty heavy hood. So there it is, four cylinder, 1.8 liter. You see it's not quite as smooth as the uh, V6, but of course it's out of idle right now, just trying to sip some gas. Uh, it's not really it's just staying running. But you see everything's tucked away, um, all the wires are secure, and, uh, and Nissan's designed for the long haul, so they, uh, they have a good design for things. this one has the CVT transmission like I mentioned before and uh, this you know gives you the optimal performance and gas mileage if you're not familiar with the CVT um, and gear ratios and all that stuff I'll try to make a video more specific on the CVT but I do have some you know, ask the engineer student videos that go into gear ratios and power bands on engines stuff like that all right if you have any questions any clarifications uh, please leave it in the comments and I'll see you next time thanks for watching